Welcome to another edition of Black Knights Weekly. On this week's show, Rich DeMarco talks with Stephanie Golan and Russell Payne about the big weekend both on and off the field for the soccer teams. We also talk to the football seniors before they play their final game here inside Mikey Stadium. And we feature two cousins who are excelling both on the gridiron and the pitch. But before we get to that, let's check out what happened last week in Army Athletics. Friday night was the annual star match for the women's soccer programs of Army and Navy. Joey Malachek scored in the fourth minute to put Army out front. In the 25th minute, Aaron Helbling would find Kim on, who headed the ball into the goal to increase the Black Knights' lead. But the mids would rally in the second half to come out on top by one. Two days later, the Black Knights were back on the field, this time against American. Just like against the mids, Army would score early in the match. Ruthie Rosenberger tallied her third goal of the season in the second minute, giving the Black Knights a 1-0 lead. In the second half, Ahn would get her second goal of the weekend, while senior D. Clegg finished off the scoring in the 3-0 win. With the victory, the Black Knights clinched a berth in the Patriot League tournament. Back at West Point, the volleyball team hosted Lafayette Friday night. In Army's 3-0 win over the Leopards, Ariana Mankus and Margot Jarka tied for match high honors with 12 kills apiece. Mankus also led all players with 21 digs for her 12th double-double of the season. The Black Knights also had 11 service aces, led by Mary Vaquero's career-high six. Mankus would again lead the Black Knights the very next day in their 3-1 win over Lehigh. The junior had 15 kills, with Megan Wilton totaling 14 and Francine Vasquez adding 11. With the win, the Black Knights remain tied with American for first in the Patriot League. Wednesday night, the volleyball team stepped out of league play for a showdown with Manhattan. Army would extend their win streak to six with a 3-0 sweep. Mankus and Wilton combined for 35 kills in the win. As a team, the Black Knights had an attack percentage of 331. Shea Stadium was the scene of a wild shootout between the sprint football team and post. After falling behind 25-7, the Black Knights would come back in a big way. Quarterback Javier Sesteda would lead the charge as the Black Knights won 57-43. Sesteda scored four times through the air and four on the ground, including the go-ahead score with a little more than two minutes to play. The Black Knights defense chipped in three interceptions as well. On Saturday, the rifle team put their perfect record on the line at second-ranked West Virginia. Richard Calvin shared runner-up honors in air rifle, but the Mountaineers would come away with the win. The men's and women's swimming and diving team split their meet against UMass on Saturday afternoon. The men would come out with the win, while the women dropped a heartbreaking meet to the Minute Women. The Black Knight men stayed unbeaten thanks to victories in 11 of the first 13 events. Will Vienna and June Chung each won two events to pace the men's side, while Alyssa Tran claimed four wins in the women's meet. The football team suffered a setback on the road at Vanderbilt Saturday night. Freshman fullback Larry Dixon rushed for a career-high 92 yards on nine carries. Freshman Angel Santiago made his collegiate debut and scored his first career touchdown, while classmate Jeffrey Bacon snagged his first career interception and returned it 70 yards for a score. It was a crucial Patriot League contest for the men's soccer team as they hosted Bucknell Saturday night. An 18-yard shot by David Rouleau put Army ahead less than six minutes into the game, but the Bison tied the score at one in the 54th minute. However, Army wasn't done as Arnold Chun would win the match for Army in the 73rd minute on his first goal of the season. Freshman keeper Winston Bolt picked up his first career win. Wednesday, the Black Knights were back at home as they hosted Adelphi. The visiting Panthers took a 1-0 lead off a penalty kick in the first half. But in the second half, Trent Brown redirected a Michael Kim free kick to not the score at one. With less than 10 minutes to play, Elliot McGilbra found Kyle Golonski, who buried a shot to the upper 90 to give Army the lead. Bolt stopped a shot right on the doorstep with just seconds left to preserve the win. The hockey team traveled to Cape Cod for a matchup with nationally ranked Colgate. In front of a sold-out crowd, Kyle Maggard started the scoring with his first goal of the season in the second period. Mike Henderson tallied his second goal of the season five minutes later. But the Raiders evened the game at two in the third period. That would cap the scoring as the game ended in a tie. The women's tennis team finished their fall season at the ITA Regional Championship. Freshman Natalie Allen made it to the main draw in the singles bracket and went one and one. Jamila Paul and Della Taylor also made it to the main draw in singles. The Black Knights also had two doubles teams in the tournament. On the links, Matt Philly led the golf team with a third place finish at the Service Academy Classic. The showing is Philly's third top 10 of the fall. After the break, Rich DeMarco talks with Stephanie Golan and Russell Payne before this crucial weekend for both teams. We'll be right back. 
This is Scott Swanson, Director of Strength Conditioning, with our SurgeX Training Tip of the Week. Proper posture is critical to life. One, it helps keep your bones and joints in correct alignment. Two, it helps decrease the abnormal wearing of joint surfaces that could result in arthritis. Three, it decreases the stress on ligaments, holding the joints and spine together. Four, it prevents the spine from becoming fixed in abnormal positions. Five, it prevents fatigue because muscles are being used more efficiently. Welcome back to Black Knights Weekly. Rich DeMarco going one-on-one -on -one with both Army soccer coaches, women's coach Stephanie Golan and the men's soccer team coach Russell Payne. A big weekend for the Army soccer teams as a joint alumni weekend culminating in a doubleheader on Sunday against Lafayette. And Steph, let's start with you. And of course, this uh, bringing both programs together and the alumni back has to be a very special weekend for you guys. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. You know, we, Russell and I, are, are trying to create a big Army soccer community, not a women's community and a, and a men's community, but join the, the two programs together. So the fact that this worked out for us to, to do so on senior day is an ex extremely uh, special moment for, for both programs. We expect a huge crowd, and you know both programs are going to be working hard to make their alumni proud. And very special for your program, a silver anniversary team. Absolutely, and you know we're very excited. We're going to have 17 of those 22 members represented at uh, at halftime, and you know to be able to show them where the program has gone since they've been there, and that they were the ones who laid the foundation for the success that the program has had is going to be just just an awesome moment. And a big game for your program already in the Patriot League tournament, playing for seeding right now, and of course uh, you want that big win over Lafayette on Sunday. Absolutely. Um, you know, regardless of who the opponent was, it, it's going to close out our, our season at home on Clinton Field and you always want to end with a with a win so you know our, our girls are, are pumped up um, you know coming off of a 3-0 win over American on on Sunday which was another big big moment for the the program and and we're excited well Steph we move on to Russ and of course this game uh, Sunday enormous for your program as well a victory would still keep you alive in terms of getting to the Patriot League tournament that's the number one thing. I think our guys are, uh, are extremely excited about the, the prospect of having a chance to play in the postseason, and they know that this takes them one step closer. You know, there's no guarantees. A lot of things have to work out in our favor, um, even with the potential result. And, uh, you know, we need to continue the momentum going from this past weekend against Bucknell. But it's a, it's a good spot to be in right now for our guys. Russell, in your second year, you've done a lot to embrace uh, the alumni and the history here of soccer at West Point. What's your feelings about hosting this alumni weekend? Um, it's, it's, you know, th these are always special times, special moments. First and foremost, it's a great weekend for Army Athletics, you know, with the football game on Saturday against Fordham. Um, you know, there's going to be a big turnout for that. And, and myself and Stephanie with our event Saturday morning before the football game and then, you know, Sunday, the, the senior day. There's a lot to look forward to. Uh, we've got an extremely strong tradition with, uh, with Army soccer in general and the Army men's soccer team since 1921 has had unbelievable support um, year after year. And it's, it's, it's good to be able to bring these guys back and, and, uh, and let them see, you know, where the program has gone and, and, and let our, our boys also see, you know, the tradition and the foundation that was laid before them. It should be a great weekend. It absolutely will be. Well, Russell, Stephanie, we appreciate your time here joining us on Black Knights Weekly. It's Army Men's Women's Soccer Alumni Weekend culminating in a doubleheader against Lafayette at Clinton Field on Sunday afternoon. We'll have more Black Knights Weekly coming up for you in just a moment. Army hockey and basketball tickets are on sale now. West Point's Hollander Center is the place to be for all the action on the ice and hardwood. Season and individual game tickets are on sale now. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or go online at GoArmySports.com. You can also ask about group and youth team opportunities. That's Army hockey and basketball. Call 877-TIX-ARMY or log on to GoArmySports.com. Army hockey and basketball. It's more than just a game at West Point. Saturday marks the final game inside Mikey Stadium for a special group of seniors. Here are some of their thoughts on their four years here at West Point. I just want to make it you know, the best performance we've had yet here. Uh, it's been four, four years, a lot of fun, a lot of memories created in the stadium, and uh, I think it's the best place to play in college football. And so. To have the the chance to play here for the last time, you just want to just want to go out on the uh, on a high note. You know, sitting here getting ready for this last game, it's just kind of bittersweet. You know, uh, obviously we almost we never like wanted to end. It's been such a such a great ride playing here and, and getting the opportunity and just kind of coming up with these guys. Um, 
So really, we're just excited, ready, really excited to play for them. Excited to just you know, get the opportunity to play here one more time. Well, it's just uh, kind of surreal. I mean, uh, yesterday in meetings, Coach Ellerson talked about us seniors and you know, kind of looking at all the names that are on the stadium and associated with Army football and um, just knowing that that's all culminating into kind of this last um, go at it at Mikey Stadium. It's, uh, it's going to be emotional, but, you know, looking forward to it, and it's hopefully we can end it on the right step. There definitely is going to be a build of emotion for sure, uh, knowing all the memories that you've created uh, at this place and um, just to probably take a step back to and reflect on how you know I've been able to share just as long just as all the other seniors have with all the other great Army football players uh, you know we've shared so many great memories on this field. And for those of you attending the game senior day festivities start just after 3 p.m. We'll have more Black Knights Weekly after this short timeout. Now you can follow West Point and Army Athletics through social media like never before. On Facebook, West Point USMA and Army Black Knights. On Twitter, at West Point News and Army Athletics. And on YouTube, the West Point Channel and Army Athletics. Social media, your way to stay connected to West Point and Army Athletics anywhere at any time. Last Saturday was a big day for the Bolt family. Rich DeMarco has more on the two cousins who are building the family name here at West Point. This past Saturday night, the Army football and soccer teams got big performances from the same family. In Nashville, Tennessee, junior punter Chris Bolt boomed a 65-yard punt for the Black Knights, while back here at West Point, younger cousin freshman Winston Bolt was in goal for his first collegiate win as the Black Knights defeated Bucknell. This pair of cousins both followed a similar path to West Point after growing up just miles apart from each other in St. Louis, with both playing soccer and football growing up. Chris Bolt, who broke into the Army lineup at punter in the Tulane game earlier this month, says his relationship with Winston has come full circle here at West Point. Yeah, you know, we grew up uh, different schools, um, kind of went on different paths, and then we kind of joined together here at West Point. Um, it's, you know, it's really fun to watch them grow up. And Winston says that relationship has grown. I see him probably every week, um, at least every week, either in passing or he, he actually comes and stops by and says hi every once in a while, checks on me. And with the cousins both part of athletic teams here at West Point, Winston says the pair's families have been able to make a joint trip to watch them play. They love it. Uh, my dad and my uncle actually came up and watched a football game and a soccer game a few weeks ago. It was Chris's first start is when, when my uncle and my dad came up. Um, so they, they're always talking about it. My mom and his mom are always talking about it. They're really excited to have us both in the same place. And looking at his younger cousin, Chris Bolt is proud of how far Winston has come. You know, he worked really hard to prepare before he came to West Point, more, a lot more so than I did. Um, he's really got a tough, really good work ethic, working really hard, um, both on and off the field. So I'm pretty impressed. He's doing a great job. And that feeling of pride is definitely shared by Winston. It's just great to have somebody here that's paved such a good path for me. And it's it's definitely nice to walk around campus and everywhere you go it's all you're Chris's brother right now I'm, I'm Chris's cousin but it's everybody knows Chris and the Army soccer and football programs have both enjoyed the impact and production of the Bolt cousins this season for Black Knights Weekly I'm Rich DeMarco and the Bolt family will be busy this weekend we'll tell you more about that coming up in this week's weekend preview join the Army A Club today and support cadet athletes 12 months a year Members of the A-Club receive priority consideration for parking, seat locations, pre-game hospitality, as well as Army-Navy tickets. But the benefits don't stop there. The A-Club also gives members access to special receptions and events throughout the year. To join, visit the A-Club link at GoArmySports.com or call 845-938-2322. The Army A-Club, supporting cadet athletes. The sprint football team kicks off the weekend Friday night against Penn. Head coach Lieutenant Colonel Mark West says things don't get any easier with the season winding down. Big game. Uh, you know, we're undefeated in the league. Uh, Penn uh, has one loss, so this is really a do or die game for them. Um, but playing at home, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, we've still yet to put together that, that perfect game, as I want to call it. So, uh, you know, we're looking forward to the, the matchup. Uh, Penn's got a very good football team, uh, and I know they're going to come in here ready to play. 
The men's tennis team wraps up their fall season with the Dartmouth Invitational. Head coach Jim Poling says his team is focused heading into the weekend. Well, we talk about uh, being a true warrior on the court, which means to us a, a true warrior says yes to everything. In other words, there are good days, there are bad days. Maybe you're not hitting the ball the way you like. Maybe you're a little bit sick. Maybe it's windy. But you say, I'm a competitor. I'm going to walk out there. Once I walk through the door, I'm going to be a true warrior. So that's our goal. That's our number one goal. Saturday marks the Patriot League Championships for the cross-country teams. Assistant coach Jennifer Durego says the tapering process is going strong. They do quite a bit of um, mental visualization and stuff like that. Um, they've run the course already, so they know kind of what to expect. Um, but really with the, tap the tapering, it's, it's more of just keeping the same intensity, just less. So, I mean, they've put in the bulk of their work already, and it's just kind of everything's just about 25% less or 30% less of what they usually do. But it's not any slower or anything like that. It's senior day at Mikey Stadium for the football team as they host Fordham. Here's head coach Rich Ellerson. We don't have to do anything we haven't done. We don't have to do anything we don't know how to do, but we have to do it. And we have to do it routinely. Uh, that's that's a, a precondition for success. Um, the good news is our, our team plays hard. You know, our team our team competes. Our team doesn't give up on itself. They don't get they don't get down on each other. They get down they don't get down on what we're doing. The hockey team hits the road to take on UConn this weekend. Head coach Brian Riley says playing tough competition early in the season will pay off down the road. We've gone toe to toe the last two weekends. Merrimack's number nine in the country. Uh, like I said, uh, Colgate, I, I think 15. Um, Union's been, been number 11. So uh, hopefully that'll go a long ways to helping to make us a better team. Um, you know, I think the experience of playing against teams like, like that is only something that can help you uh, coming down, or rather coming into the opening, really, of the, the league stretch here. It's a double header on Sunday for both the men's and women's soccer teams. Both squads will honor their seniors before their matches with Lafayette. Head coaches Stephanie Golan and Russell Payne are excited for this weekend. For us, we want to put ourselves in a, in a good position, and we want you know our, our current players to take a lot of pride playing in front of the, the alumni who, who will be here. We're going to have a really strong turnout, so for us, it's an important, uh, it's an important moment to, to bridge the gap between the past and the, and the current of the, the program, and we're excited to do so. It's a spot that we haven't been in quite some time um, to be able to, to, to fight for our postseason future. And, um, you know, we're extremely excited. Lafayette's a very good team. Um, they've had some, some very good results already this season and, and, and uh, gotten to a significant national ranking already. So uh, we're looking forward to the, to the challenge. Rounding out the weekend, the volleyball team looks to clinch a spot in the Patriot League tournament when they host Holy Cross. Head coach Alma Cavacci is proud of the way her team competed against Manhattan. Tremendous, tremendous win for us, and it's just happening at the right time. We're getting better at the right time. Uh, yesterday we were down 20 to 14 or 21 to 15, and took a timeout. And after that, we never looked back. That's the sign of a great team that's not going to quit, and that's Army Volleyball. So that will do it for another edition of Black Knights Weekly. For everyone here at ITT Night Vision, we hope you enjoy this week's show, and we'll see you next week. So long, everybody.